today, our topic for today is Rule 113 on arrest. What do we mean by arrest? Arrest is the taking of a person into custody in order that he may be bound to answer for the commission of an offense. In other words, this implies control over the person under custody. It implies restraint on his liberty to the extent that he is not free to live on his own volition. In other words, the person is being taken into custody under the law. How do we made the arrest? It is made by an actual restraint of a person to be arrested or by his submission to the custody of the person making the arrest. In other words, made by actual restraint by the arresting officer or it was the accused himself who submitted to the custody of the person making the arrest without showing any um, objection to the arrest being done against him. Now, we have to remember that in Section 2, it provides that no violence or unnecessary force shall be used in making an arrest. The person shall not be subjected to a greater restraint than is necessary for his detention. Remember, we have there the justifying circumstance of lawful performance of duty. Lawful performance implies that there was smooth arrest done to the accused, you did not use unnecessary force or you did not use violence when you effected the arrest upon the accused. Because if you did other if, if you did it the other way around, of course you cannot justify your act to be law uh, under lawful performance of duty. When shall or how do we arrest a person you have there? But how do we arrest him? Or what instrument is needed to arrest a person? We have there the so-called warrant of arrest. It is a, a document being issued by the court to arrest a person who committed a crime. Now you have the section 2 of the Bill of Rights of the Constitution. No search warrant or warrant of arrest shall issue except upon probable cause to be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Now here, because we are talking about warrant of arrest, so no warrant of arrest shall be issued except upon probable cause to be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses, he may produce, particularly describing the person to be arrested. So what are the important phrases that we need to learn on this particular provision of the Bill of Rights? You have their probable cause for purposes of the issuance of a warrant of arrest. What is probable cause? It refers to such facts and circumstances which would lead a reasonably discreet and prudent man to believe that an offense has been committed by the person sought to be arrested. The court is convinced that this accused being charged in the information has committed the, the crime to which he is being charged. That's why a warrant of arrest shall be issued against him. Next is on personal examination of the judge. This constitutional provision does not mandatorily require the judge to personally examine the complainant and his witnesses. In other words, face-to-face -face examination by the judge of the complainant and the witnesses is not mandatory. In fact, it is sufficient that he will personally evaluate the report and supporting documents submitted by the prosecutor or he may disregard the prosecutor's report and require the submission of affidavit, supporting affidavits of the witnesses. Now, what do we mean by this? Remember in our Rule 112, Preliminary Investigation, when the investigating prosecutor, the public prosecutor, is convinced that there is probable cause against the accused, remember, he will prepare a resolution 
and the complaint or information shall be filed before the court, attach thereto all the documents you submitted before the prosecutor's office. That would be an attachment to the complaint or information. Now, what would be the report or the supporting documents referred to here? It is the complaint or information and the attachments. All the documents you submitted before the prosecutor's office when he did the preliminary investigation, those would be attached to the uh, complaint or information. Same thing here with submission of supporting affidavits of your witnesses that is part of the record already because it is part of the preliminary investigation. The prosecutor would likewise attach the same when the, the case is filed in court. So all the court would do is to personally evaluate the same. Remember that the judge is given a period of 10 days within which to personally examine the complaint or information. So if the judge is convinced that there is probable cause, he will issue a warrant of arrest. What shall the arresting do when they would execute or receive a warrant of arrest? It shall be the duty of the officer executing the warrant to arrest the accused and deliver him to the nearest police station or jail without a necessary delay. So when the police officer successfully executed the warrant through the arrest of the accused, he will deliver him to the nearest police station or jail. When shall the warrant be executed? So meaning to say, kanus amaday to niya pwede madakop ang accuse. So after the judge is convinced that there is probable cause, he will issue the warrant of arrest. And of course, it would be endorsed or turned over to the PNP for its execution or implementation. The head of the office to whom the warrant of arrest was delivered for execution shall cause the warrant to be executed within 10 days from its receipt. So they are given a period of 10 days to implement the warrant. When shall you reckon the 10 days from its receipt of the warrant? Then after the lapse of the 10-day period from receipt here, after the expiration of the period, the officer to whom it was assigned for execution shall make a report to the judge who issued the warrant. What do we mean by this report? Meaning to say, after the expiration of the 10 day period, he is supposed to report to the judge by making a return of the warrant. So if he successfully arrested the accused, of course he will return the warrant and make a report that it was successfully served and the accused is now in the municipal jail, for example, awaiting trial. Remember in the previous section, he will be delivered to the nearest police station. Nearest police station. So, the police who executed the warrant will make a report to the judge. Inform the judge that he arrested the accused. Now, what if he failed to arrest the accused? In case of his failure to execute the warrant, he shall state the reason. What was the reason? Why was the accused not arrested? Either he could no longer be found on the given address. He cannot be located despite efforts to locate him or when he was about to, to serve the, the warrant, he successfully eluded arrest. So whatever reason, there is that report to be uh, submitted by the officer to the court. So if the report would say that the same was unserved, remember for whatever reason you state there, what shall the court do now? Because Attached to the report is the warrant of arrest itself. So since the, the warrant has been returned to the court and it was unserved, the court shall issue an alias warrant against the accused. Meaning to say that shall remain 
valid until actual arrest of the accused. In the meantime, the case against the accused will be sent to the archives. Archives, that is the, the term we use in order to take it out from the active docket of the court archive lang usa that it shall be revived the moment the of the actual acute uh, arrest of the accused so revived na said taken back to the active docket of the court if he will be arrested later on now not all instance that a police officer would make a return of the, the warrant so what shall the court do under the rule on continuous trial, if after six months, after the issuance of the warrant, the accused remains at large, meaning to say he was not arrested despite the lapse of the six months from the issuance of the warrant, and then the police as well did not make a report, did not make a return of the warrant, the court shall... Uh, archive the case but no need to issue the alias warrant because presumably the warrant of arrest is still in the possession of the police officer now are, are there instances where we can actually arrest the accused with the warrant For a while, I think it jumped off. So you have their warrantless arrest. What are these instances wherein warrantless arrest is considered to be lawful? Meaning to say, a person can be arrested without a warrant, and yet the same is considered to be lawful under the law. Any peace officer or a private person may without a warrant arrest a person now by the way that's why you notice in the earlier slide the the rule used arresting officer it did not use peace officer or police officer because a private person can actually make arrest we call that as citizen's arrest when in his presence the person to be arrested has committed is actually committing or is attempting to commit an offense. In other words, we call this is also known as in flagrante delicto. When shall there be in flagrante delicto? The person to be arrested must execute an overt act indicating that he has just committed, is actually committing, or is attempting to commit a crime. So in other words, the person sought to be arrested must be executing an overt act pertaining to the commission of the crime. And such overt act is done in the presence or within the view of the arresting officer. The person making the arrest himself witnesses the crime and hence has personal knowledge of the commission of the offense. So, whether you are a police officer or you are a citizen, you don't need to go to court and secure a warrant of arrest before you can cause the arrest of the person. If you do that, the moment you come back because you still go to the court and ask for a warrant of arrest, the accused is no longer there. He has fled for all intents and purposes. So let's try to evaluate the following cases, whether the same is considered to be lawful, warrantless arrest. Arrest after conducting a by-bus operation. I think you have heard of by-bus operation. I think you have heard of entrapment operation, specifically for violation under RA 9165. So this is the means devised by the law enforcement in order to cut in the act the accused violating RA 9165 
specifically or especially on selling dangerous drug. So you have there a police decoy or a posture buyer pretending to be a buyer of dangerous drug armed with a buy bus money or mark, mark, mark money exchange it with the shabu that shall be handed by the accused. So, by the exchange of the shabu and the buy bus money, the accused can be lawfully arrested thereafter even without a warrant of arrest because he has just committed a crime in the presence of the arresting officer. Arrest of a fleeing individual it's he is already fleeing, so with more reason that you have to pursue him and arrest him. You do not need to go to 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 the court and secure first the warrant of arrest. Di nakakapas, okay? Uh, while we see, while we knew that flight is indicative of guilt, but in this case of People versus Villarreal, the court ruled that. Flight per se is not synonymous with guilt and must not always be attributed to one's consciousness of guilt. So just be careful as well. Okay, pwede mang good na ay tao ni dagan tungod kay nahadlok. Okay, so be careful as well. But if you have witness on the commission of the crime, of course, he is already fleeing after the commission, pursue him. You can arrest him without a warrant. Previous criminal record, would this be sufficient to cause the arrest of the accused without a warrant? The answer is in the negative. Now, though um, arresting the accused is based on probable cause, especially in uh, hot pursuit. Now, this is very crucial as far as in flagrante delicto because presumably the police officer there have seen you actually committing. So, if you are there in the crime scene and because of your previous record, you are being arrested and that is not sufficient to justify your warrantless arrest. Arrest on the basis of improper and unpleasant movements. In the case of Comerciante, the court ruled that that is not lawful, that does not fall under lawful warrantless arrest because of the improper and unpleasant movements. Same with, you are given a tip. There is that information received by you that there are people who are carrying marijuana and yet at the time you caused their arrest, they did not do anything. No outward indication of a crime being committed. So here, in the case of Molina, the court ruled that that is not lawful warrantless arrest. Same with Malakat. Arrest made based on inference that the eyes of the person were moving fast and looking at every person passing by. So that is not sufficient to cause the arrest of the accused. But when a police officer, for instance, sees the offense although at a distance or hears the disturbance created and proceeds at once to the scene thereof, he may effect an arrest without a warrant since the offense is deemed committed in his presence. So, in his presence, within his view, includes as well, hears the disturbance and he proceeded at once. People versus Del Rosario. Conduct of surveillance operation in a bus station, same with in the pier, also in the airport. You have there um, baggage check or the uh, check on the passengers. That is a, a valid in case you will be arrested there on because you are in possession of contraband. You can be arrested without a warrant of arrest based on its urgency. The officers were faced by an on-the-spot information which required them to act swiftly. So that is the case of Tang Leben. So that is in flagrante. Next is when an officer, when an offense has just been committed, 
and he has probable cause to believe based on personal knowledge of facts or circumstances that the person to be arrested has committed it. So this is the second instance on warrantless arrest, also known as hot pursuit operation. Now here, the crime was not committed in the presence or within the view of the arresting officer. He was not present. He was not around. But then, how does an arresting officer justify the arrest of the person without a warrant? Now, the law requires that it must be based on probable cause, based on personal knowledge of facts. So how would that be possible? When in the first place, he was not present at the crime scene. He was not uh, no, no, no. He was not present when the crime was committed. So how would he be able to gain personal knowledge of facts? Um, to illustrate this one, you have their A stub B. So A proceeded to the police station right away and seek assistance to the police officer for the arrest of B. Now, the police officer obtained personal knowledge based on the report, prompt report, swift report given by the victim coupled with the body of the crime by seeing the, the swollen face of the victim. So he responded right away and when they saw the accused, he was identified by the victim. The police can justify his arrest without a warrant under the hot pursuit operation. So what then are the requisites under hot pursuit? An offense has just been committed. The person making the arrest has personal knowledge of facts indicating that the person to be arrested has committed it. Now remember that in the hot pursuit operation, it emphasizes immediacy of the arrest. Okay, immediacy of the arrest. Record from the commission of the crime. Again, the police got his personal knowledge from the swift report of the victim coupled with the fact that he have seen the body of the crime. So for example, um, after the, let's say that the victim was being stabbed by the, the accused, so the victim was rushed to the hospital. As a matter of protocol, the hospital personnel called the police reporting that there is this stabbing incident. So the police went to the uh, hospital, interviewed the victim. They saw the body of the crime, which is the injury sustained by the victim. So out of that uh, facts given, they already have obtained personal knowledge of the facts. So they can proceed right away to arrest the accused even without a warrant. Now, however, there are instances wherein the, the police officer would reckon their arrest from the time of reporting. Not from the commission of the crime, but from the time of reporting. To illustrate, um, let us say that the victim, after he sustained injury, he went to the hospital for treatment. And then it just on, on, on the next day that he reported the incident to the police. And from that reporting, the police acted swiftly, let's say swiftly right away and caused the arrest of the accused. Now take note that the arrest there was not reckoned from the time of the commission of the crime, but from the time of reporting. Now, in hot pursuit operation, the arrest there must be immediate from the commission of the crime and not from the time of reporting of the victim, which is the following day in our uh, second uh, scenario. So when we say immediate, how many hours would this be? So that the police would be justified in making a hot pursuit operation and cause the arrest of the accused. Now, if you were reading and you have understood what you are reading there in the book of Riano, 
there is no hard and fast rule as far as the hot pursuit operation is concerned. Same with the Book of Reyes when you have their Article 125. Because basically here, under here, we have to bring the arrested person to the proper judicial authority within the prescribed period of 12, 18, 36 hours. That should have been reckoned from the time of commission of the crime that you cause the arrest of the accused and then you will deliver him to the proper judicial authority and not from the time of reporting. Now, there is no hard and fast rule. Again, no hard and fast rule as far as hot pursuit operation is concerned because there are also instances that even after three days, the court still considered it to be a uh, hot pursuit operation. How did they justify it? That after the commission of the crime by the accused, they are already pursuing the accused. And it took them three days to finally arrest the accused. Okay, so no hard and fast rule. For as long as they can justify it, that there is that uh, continuous pursue against the accused from the time it's commissioned, then it's considered to be hot pursuit still valid lawful warrantless arrest. What is the distinction between inflagrante and hot pursuit? Under the inflagrante delicto exception, the person making the arrest himself witnesses the crime. In the hot pursuit exception, the person making the arrest knows for a fact that a crime has been committed. Personal knowledge of facts must be based on probable cause, which means actual belief or reasonable grounds of suspicion. Actual belief for inflagrante reasonable grounds of suspicion for hot pursuit. The grounds are reasonable when the suspicion that the person to be arrested is probably guilty of committing the offense is based on actual facts like supported by cir circumstances sufficiently strong in themselves to create the probable cause of guilt of the accused to be arrested. A reasonable suspicion, on the other hand, uh, a reasonable suspicion, therefore, must be founded on probable cause coupled with good faith on the part of the peace officers making the arrest. Take note, coupled with good faith. Remember, in one of the justifying circumstances, lawful performance. So when we say lawful performance, that implies due care and good faith on the part of the peace officer. Actual belief or reasonable ground of suspicion, people versus tutud, reiterates probable cause there as a ground for warrantless arrest. Personal knowledge in arrest without warrant must be based upon probable cause, which means an actual belief or reasonable grounds of suspicion. The grounds of suspicion are reasonable when? In the absence of actual belief of the arresting officer, the suspicion of the person to be arrested is probably guilty of committing the offense is based on actual facts. Again, coupled with good faith on the part of the peace officers making the arrest. Last instance where lawful warrantless arrest is considered to be lawful, you have there, when the person to be arrested is a prisoner who has escaped from a penal establishment or place where he is serving final judgment or is temporarily confined while his case is pending or has escaped while being transferred from one confinement to another. So this is a case of an escapee. This presupposes the case is already pending against him. Hence, no need to deliver him uh, to the proper judicial authority within the prescribed period of 12, 18, 36 hours. So Article 125 does not apply to him anymore, only under paragraphs A and B. 
That's why if the person is arrested without a warrant under paragraphs A and B, he has to be delivered to the nearest police station or jail and shall be proceeded against in accordance with Section 6. What is Section 6? Inquest proceeding. Okay, inquest proceeding. In Section 6, an arrest may be made on any day and at any time of the day or night. So, even if it's a holiday, even if it's a Saturday or Sunday, even if the court is closed, the police can actually cause your arrest. How shall he make the arrest? If the arrest is by virtue of a warrant, the officer shall inform the person to be arrested of the cause of the arrest and the fact that a warrant has been issued for his arrest. Okay, he shall inform the person to be arrested of the cause of the arrest and the fact that the warrant has been issued for his arrest. Except, when he flees or forcibly resists before the officer has opportunity to so inform him or when the giving of such information will imperil the arrest. So what do we mean by this? So, if kula imong dakpunon, inform him of the, the cause of his arrest, uh, inform him that he will be arrested and the cause of his arrest. Of course, you don't have to be choy choy and explain to him such fact if he resisted or he is about to flee. It would be now hard for you to pursue him if you are that so literal of so informing him of the warrant and your intention to arrest him. The officer, in fact, the officer did not have the warrant in his possession at the time of the arrest. But after the arrest, if the person arrested so requires, the warrant shall be shown to him as soon as practic practicable. So the last sentence would tell us that he could still effect the arrest of the accused even if the the actual warrant is in the police station and he leave it there because he would be off duty. So meaning to say even if he is off duty, the police officer can still arrest the, the accused. Now question, would it be possible to arrest the accused if the warrant is just a photocopy? The answer is yes. He can even effect the arrest even if he is not in possession of the warrant at the time of the arrest. How much more if you have there a photocopy? That would be possible. Be, uh, for easy execution, it could be possible that the police had, had it photocopied. Now, how about the arrested person? What would be his remedy? Actually, you have there the rights of the arrested person detained or under custodial investigation as provided under RA 7438. This pertains to the rights, the general rights of the arrested or detained person. The right to be assisted by counsel at all times. The right to remain silent. The right to be informed of the above rights and the right to be visited by the immediate members of his family, by his council, or by any other government, organization, national or international. So are this, is this the, um, now the, the most common that you are more familiar with is the so-called Miranda rights. Uh, taken from this, rephrase lang. It is so-called Miranda rights it's taken from that particular accused who was arrested, Miranda. So that's how they're the Miranda rights. So a person on the very act of the accused, uh, arrest, you will hear the police officer would say, you have the right to remain silent Anything you say can be used against you in any court of law. You have the right to an attorney. And if you cannot afford one, you will be provided with one. Okay, so that is the Miranda right. Now, with the further modification in People versus Chavez, kay gahi man si accused. 
garbo. I don't need a counsel. Okay, the court ruled that modified to include the statement that any waiver of the right to counsel must be made in writing and in the presence of counsel. This is to assure that there was no force inflicted upon the accused when he waived his right to counsel that he fully understands of his right and the consequences of waiving such right. Now, how about if the arrest is without a warrant? How shall it be done? When making an arrest without a warrant, the person shall inform the person, the officer shall inform the person to be arrested of his authority and the cause of the arrest. Unless the latter is either engaged in the commission of the offense, so in flagrante, or had pursuit no need to inform him. Or has escaped, flees, or forcibly resists before the officer has opportunity to so inform him or when the giving of such information will imperil the arrest. How about if it is done by a private person? If it is a private person effecting a citizen's arrest, he shall inform the person to be arrested of the intention to arrest him and the cause of the arrest, unless the latter is either engaged in the commission of an offense, is pursued immediately after its commission, or has escaped, flees, or forcibly resists before the person making the arrest has opportunity to so inform him, or when giving of such information will imperil the arrest. So this is for those confident citizens. An officer making a lawful arrest may orally summon as many persons as he deems necessary to assist him in effecting the arrest. Every person who summoned by an officer shall assist him in effecting the arrest when he can render such assistance without detriment to himself. So what does this mean? That if there is that officer, let's say overpowered by the accused, kay mas dako niya, asking for your help to effect the arrest, Di sa sadya kinahanglan o court order for you to uh, be ordered to help him. So he can orally summon. So if you if you can do the help without detriment to yourself, please do help. Otherwise, the officer may charge you for obstruction of justice. An officer in order to make an arrest either by virtue of a warrant or without a warrant as provided in Section 5, may break into any building or enclosure where the person to be arrested is or is reasonably believed to be if he is refused admittance thereto after announcing his authority. So I prosecuted one for obstruction of justice. The person was actually being pursued by the police officers after stabbing a person. So they were pursuing him. They saw him entering into that particular house. So the police officer asked the owner of the house to be allowed to get into the house. However, the owner refused them admittance. So he was charged for obstruction and was actually found guilty after the trial. So he may break into any building or enclosure only when refused admittance. Okay, refused admittance. Uh, meaning to say, if they were pursuing and they were allowed, so they, they need not break into the building. They can get in using the, the door without applying any force to break into the building. If they are inside, on ya, let's say, so the, the rule actually allows them as well to break out when necessary to liberate themselves. So it could be possible na mga guba. It's because of the refusal of the owner without making them uh, criminally liable for such damages because it was in the lawful performance 
And in fact, the owner cannot charge them for trespass to dwelling because this instance falls under the exception on trespass to dwelling. If a person lawfully arrested escapes or is rescued or per any person may immediately pursue or retake him without a warrant at any time and any place within the Philippines. Take note of any person. Right to counsel and visit, section 14. Your right to counsel, it can be done. Uh, you can confer to any member of the bar in the jail or any other place where you are being held in custody. Take note at any hour of the day or night, but subject to reasonable regulations. Same with a relative. Now question, does illegality of the arrest affects the court's jurisdiction? Now I hope you can still recall those elements wherein we can say that the court has validly acquired jurisdiction uh, in the exercise of its jurisdiction. They must have jurisdiction over the offense charge or the subject matter. They must have jurisdiction over the person of the accused. And they must have jurisdiction over the territory. Now, as far as this illegality of the arrest is concerned, this only concerns jurisdiction of the court over the person of the accused. Now, remember that, uh, that jurisdiction of the person of the accused is acquired through one arrest second voluntary submission remember so arrest illegality of the arrest cannot in itself be the basis for acquittal it will not even negate the validity of a conviction of the accused why because illegality of the arrest can be waived Illegality of the arrest can be waived. In other words, if you are really questioning the illegality of the arrest, do it prior to entering your plea. Because the moment you entered your, let's say, not guilty plea, and trial proceeded already, and you raise for the first time on appeal the illegality of your arrest, it it's considered to be a waiver. Now, let us say that now, even, if the, even if the warrantless arrest of the accused is later proven to be invalid, such fact is not sufficient cause to set aside a valid judgment rendered upon a sufficient complaint after a trial free from error is being handed by the court. So in other words, if you are questioning the illegality of your arrest, do it before your arraignment. Otherwise, that would be considered to be a waiver of your right to question the legality of your arrest. So what would be the effect of the illegality of your arrest with respect to the illegalities articles? While you may fail to timely object the illegality of your arrest, which may constitute a waiver on your part, it does not include your right to question the admissibility of the evidence seized by virtue of the illegal arrest. In other words, When the trial proceeded, you also have there your opportunity to present your evidence. You can also disprove the confiscation of the evidences presented against you because it is considered to be a fruit of the poisonous tree. While there is waiver of the illegality of your arrest, your right to question the illegality of the confiscated or seized articles is not 
included in such waiver. He does not waive the right to question the admissibility of the evidences by virtue of the illegal arrest. So it could be possible that if you succeed under this, then there would be no evidence against you. It could be possible that that would create doubt that would even result in your acquittal. But if, if you were charged of a case where that object evidence is not even necessary, Mm, sorry you because the judgment is considered to be valid even if there was illegal arrest that was done against you now the last portion here is on parliamentary immunity meaning to say these are the persons not subject to arrest who are they and when shall it be a senator or member of the House of Representatives shall, in all offenses, punishable by not more than six years of imprisonment, be privileged from arrest while Congress is in session. So who are they? Senators, members of the House of Representatives. Now you might be asking, how about the president and vice president? For all intents and purposes, while they are in office, they are immune from suit. Here, the parliamentary immunity refers to the senator and House of Representatives. Um, they are immune from being arrested if the prescribed penalty is not more than six years. In other words, while Congress is in session, they cannot be arrested even with the issuance of a warrant of arrest against them by any court that can only be executed the moment they are no longer immune or they cannot invoke parliamentary immunity. When can they do that? While Congress is in session. So you have to wait. In the, anyway, patience is a virtue. So I would like to end this lecture with this Staying of Joshua, challenges are what makes life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. So with that, I thank you for your time and see you on our next session.